Dr. Yael Danieli, we are very pleased to receive you at the Riker University. It's we, my deep honor. Your name, as in Hebrew we say, Shemech Alech Lefanea, your name goes before you <laughs> as a... Presidio. Yeah, Presidio, that's exactly. I would like to begin asking you, how did you came as a clinical psychologist to this topic? What was, what, 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 which were the motivations that bring you to this topic, in which you became one of the world experts. So in my lecture, actually, I will speak about the fact that I was actually in this topic since I was from the beginning of my life, because I grew up in Israel. And, and all the stories from the Shoah came while I was growing up. Uh, that's in Palestine still, but professionally, I was doing my doctoral dissertation on the psychology of hope. I wanted to know uh, what keeps people hoping despite the horrors of the 20th century that we still have more of today. And uh, so I was, it was a very well designed study and uh, all my students participated and uh, I took the most difficult cases which were of challenges to hope, to, to ask people what is hope for you, what does it mean to you? And so the people I took were the concentration camp survivors, prisoners of war and uh, terminally ill diagnosed patients. And uh, my students would take people who were divorced or lost classes, uh, etc. But it, 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 what seems to be less. Uh, in those days, nobody studied trauma, so we didn't even talk about that. I didn't think that way. I thought more about challenges to hope and, and uh, what keeps you surviving. And uh, I believe also in studying uh, human phenomena where they happen, so not necessarily in my laboratory or in my office. So typically I would go to survivors' homes or to, to, for, for the cancer, it would be in the hospital or POWs would be at the home. And um, I was told survivors don't talk to anybody. This is in the 60s. And older than I look. And uh, so, so this is in the 70s, 60s, 70s. And um, I would typically come to their homes, and as many of you would know, they would of course put me in the kitchen, after, it was after work. <laughs> and those people who were supposed to not talk to anybody, very often kept me until the next day because it's as if they waited for somebody to listen. So, uh, while they taught me a great deal about hope, they also told me that no one listened to them or believed them, and that even psychotherapists would move to other topics and avoid their Holocaust history. And I was like the students here, I was very idealistic. Uh, they wanted to repair the world and believe in goodness. And we created the Daniele Inventory uh, of Multi-Generational Legacies of Trauma that has three major parts. The first part, the child of survivors describes their parents' adaptational style. They don't know it's adaptational style, but they saw end upbringing. The second part, so that's called post-trauma <coughs> adaptational styles. The second part is the child describes him or herself. And uh, we call that reparative adaptational impacts. The reason for that is, you, you talk a lot about repairing the world, I talk a lot about that, is that I believe most deeply that every child, not only children of survivors, but particularly children of survivors, are totally committed, maybe unconsciously, to repair the parents 
for the parents and the world, to heal the parents and themselves, even for their own children, yeah? So uh, that's why reparative adaptation or impacts, and I call it impacts because there are many, not just one. And the third part, which is the challenge to all researchers, is four generational demographic in history. And that, of course, you have to adjust to every population. So if you choose in, in Mexico to study a certain, uh, you know, the, the, the descendants of, of uh, the indigenous people here, you have to, to adjust it to them, and then, only then can we compare different populations of victims meaningfully to understand what cultures, if culture makes a difference, etc., etc. It and is such an impressive achievement that you have developed through your professional career. It's really amazing to hear all this accomplishment that you are really a real healer of the world, healer of the Jewish people, and you really took uh, at face value the idea of tikkun olam, which means that we need to repair the world, we live in a very violent, difficult world, and your work is really amazing and a, and a guide that we can learn how to deal with a, a situation that will continue, unfortunately, with human history. So thank you very much for coming to the record. I want to thank, very, thank you very much, Dr. Steffi Fasli, to helping us that Dr. Daniel is with Absolutely. us. Thank you very much. Thank you.